Hello and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. I am George and nobody ever taught me not to point because it's rude. Anyway, today I'm going to magnetize a model I got while I was visiting Orlando for a business trip and it is this guy, the Eldar Wave Serpent. It looks pretty cool and I'm pretty sure that I'll have to magnetize turret weapons maybe some stuff up front but I won't know for sure until I tear open the model and take a look inside so let's get started so here is the behemoth that we've chosen for ourselves and when I say behemoth, I don't mean by the sheer size of the model. It's not that much bigger than, say, a Space Marine Rhino, or um, it's definitely smaller than um, one of the Primaris Grav tanks. Um, but what I'm talking about in tr uh, what I'm what I'm talking about is uh, in terms of the scale, the amount of parts that we're going to have to magnetize here. Um, so I'll start with the simplest part. Uh, there's this chin turret right here. You can take uh, a shuriken, catapult, uh, shuriken cannon, sorry, shuriken cannon, or uh, this twin-linked shuriken catapult, and it's linked to this little piece right here, which then is mounted underneath the Falcon Grav tank. That's not too bad, right? We have to magnetize two weapons to one part. That's fairly standard. The big one, though, is this guy right here. It's the turret. The turret has a twin-linked weapon, and it can be any of these choices. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five different choices. We have a shuriken catapult, the star cannon, the Eldari missile launcher, the multi-laser, and then uh, the bright lance, or the last cannon. And so <laughs> each of these weapons, that's... A total of 10, count them, need to be magnetized such that they fit onto this one piece right here. Now, you might be saying to yourself, this piece is designed to be push fit. Why would you need to magnetize? And that's a fair question, right? You can put these in. They're designed to be kind of slid in. Uh. <laughs> kind of like so. You're supposed to be able to push these in. Oh, okay. I think I was doing it incorrectly. There we go. You're supposed to be able to push them in just like that. And then these cowlings go on the outside. Kind of like that. Well... They're not really cooperating, and that's part a that's part of the problem. Uh, in that you, if you want to get these, swap them out with others. Every time you do this swap, you have to pull them out and then push them back in, and it's kind of a hassle. It's a little bit of work, um, but more importantly, so every time you swap these weapons out, you have to pull them out of this peg. Now you'll notice that it does take a little bit of force to either go in and out. And the entire time I'm doing this, I'm handling this model quite a bit, which is not going to be great for the eventual paint job. But my biggest concern is the amount of force that you need to slip these on and off. That kind of force, you're going to end up with a broken peg and probably faster than you think. So in order to prevent breakage, we're going to want to magnetize. The other part of the problem is that each of these weapons has a cowling, and you only have you only have two cowlings for ten weapons. Um, that's going to be a problem too. So you can't just slip the weapon on. You actually have to slip the weapon on and then introduce the cowling. Kind of 
kind of like so. And so there you have it. It's uh, it's friction fit, but it doesn't do friction very well. So for these reasons, magnetizing may be the way you need to go, which is a pain, but it gives us something to explore. So that's good. The other thing is, of course, that this model comes with a flight stand with those breakable little pegs. We don't want those. We want to create our own magnetized flight stand, and we're going to do that towards the end. So as I've built this model, which has its own little quirks, uh, I, I will say, um, I've realized that the magnetization process for this model isn't going to be very straightforward. I need to come up with some novel solutions. So, let me play around with it, but the very first thing we'll tackle is going to be the turrets. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I uh, kind of like it. I don't know why. Um, start with so we'll start with the first problem we've got to solve which is this turret situation and I think I have an idea of how I'm going to tackle it so so my approach is going to be to magnetize this peg so I'm going to get rid of this peg attach a magnet to it somehow uh, either kind of on this end or maybe uh, actually kind of cut it uh, down here and just have like a, a, a little stack of magnets that go up there or maybe I'll just cut halfway because the whole point is that the 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 weapon can't be flush up against here up against the wall of that thing and it has to be some distance so that it's kind of here um, so I'll have to figure that out uh, but I'll probably end up cutting a l couple of millimeters into this post and into magnets. But that's not uh, the thing I want to talk about right now. What I really want to talk about is how to magnetize these guys. And so I thought of a couple of different um, things I could try, like maybe having a countersunk magnet, in the, replacing that little disc right there, and then having a ball on this. Um, and, but then I'd have issues on the other side because I have to mount these cowlings um, and countersunk ring magnets are a little weird where the polarity is concerned. So I thought, you know what? Don't get cute. Uh, just do what you know is going to work. So the idea is to cut that whole circle thing out. So this whole ring right here cut it out entirely, replace it along its length with a stack of magnets. What size magnets? Well, these size magnets. And this doesn't help you at all because you don't know what size this is. That's why I have this label on my little magnet box. So these are these are five millimeter by two millimeter and these are a, a really decent size to replace that ring with and I'll show you right here so here we have a star cannon it is glued to a stack of two of these disc magnets I'm not entirely sure the glue is set so I want to be really careful and ginger about it and you'll notice that I have my orientations uh, for the weapons on the right side of the turret I'll have to have one orientation I'll have to flip it over for the other side, I think. Uh, but here is what that looks like. Now, it's a little goofy. Uh, the disc is kind of kind of all by itself there. Uh, that wasn't entirely what I wanted. I kind of wanted it to be a little further in there. Yeah, that's more like what I should have. Uh, so I'll probably need to re-glue this. All right, so that's better. I used entirely too much glue because I didn't, I couldn't see it coming out. So this is probably going to look a little funky. That's all right. Uh, so when it dries, it should, it should be all right. Um, so how did I get here? Well, 
I used this attachment on my uh, rotary tool and to kind of drill out those holes. Um, so, kind of like... And you want to do some cleaning up. It's a little rough. Um, this is the best attachment to use for the job. Um, well, it's the best attachment that I have, I think. It just doesn't do the job really well. The, the issue is that the hole or the divot I'm trying to make is kind of quite a bit larger than everything that I have, um, like drill bits. I have my largest drill bits are three millimeters. Uh, that's kind of the largest that'll fit into my rotary tool. So since I'm trying to make a five millimeter hole, uh, I have to improvise and that never usually ends well. But it ends good enough. So I think this will be fine. And so it's made kind of a little divot there and it kind of seems to fit in with the rest of the weapon. That's kind of the idea. And then make sure you have the orientation of the weapon. If you're building the right side of the turret, uh, this little thing is going to be pointing up. Um, so make sure that your little stack of mini magnets are on the other side. And so it seems to f probably a little bit wider. Yeah, that's a better fit. We got a little drop of glue. like so, and then attach the magnets in the proper orientation. Here we can use a stack of two. So make sure they both have a chance to sit on the part you're trying to glue them to. And uh, once it's got a decent stick, you let it set it down so it can dry for a bit, then you can play with it. I find that one of the biggest challenges to magnetizing uh, a model is oftentimes finding the right bit selection. You know, it can be guided by you know, the, the goal that you have in mind, but there's also an element of kind of trial and error. Uh, sometimes I think one bit will work really well, for example, this one that I have been using, um, and then I'm, I discover that, you know what, uh, maybe it's not what I want, and so I have to try something else, and then when I finally stumble upon it, oh man, it's just gorgeous. Here, with this bit, it's a kind of a cylindrical bit. It kind of drills out the sides. Uh, it's a much cleaner cut uh, than I've been able to get with the others. Uh, so I'll show you. This is a shuriken catapult, or a shuriken cannon. And with this bit, I'll cut right into where I want to cut. Okay, well, sometimes it works better than other times. I may have cut too much here. Uh, it can be easy with power tools to cut away a little too much. Um, so you gotta be careful with it. So now, unfortunately, my magnets are gonna be a structural element that wasn't the ideal, but it'll work. And you can always reinforce it with um, uh, epoxy or something like that. These are all things that will come with practice um, and experience and even when you have plenty of both you still are gonna make mistakes. It's gonna happen. It's fine. This is just a game. You want to do as good a job as you can but um, you just gotta roll with the punches sometimes. And that's fine too. All right, so this cluster of weapons, fun looking as, it's, as it looks, uh, it's all magnetized and I have them in the cluster here just to make sure that I have the magnets orientation all set up. And I've got two, so one of each weapon is represented. They're designed so that they are going to go onto the turret on either side, kind of like that. So my next step is to get the turret magnetized. And to do that, I'm going to snip some of this right just a little bit. There we go. 
just it's just a little bit further in from this kind of step up it takes just enough space to give the magnet a place to go without pushing out the weapons too much and before you add any magnets you want to flatten this out and a sanding stick works really well to accomplish that task you can go a couple of ways with this. Um, you can have a magnet that'll fit exactly that, that slot. Um, but you could also go with a slightly bigger magnet. And that will work as well. And um, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with a bigger magnet just because uh, it's already going to look a little weird. And if I use a smaller magnet, I'm going to run the risk of having less attractive force than I'd like. Though I do have two a stack of two magnets in each of these, uh, so it probably won't be that big a deal, but um, I might as well get the, the job done right. So I want to check, there we go, I want to check with the polarities to make sure that they're going to go in correctly, and so, and that's how the magnet will be attached. Right here is the turret. It's got the two magnets on it. Okay, so it doesn't look like much. It's not anything to write home about, but it should work. Here we have left hand side missile launcher. Should go right there. And we'll do the right hand side missile launcher. And it'll go right there. So, we now have a twin-linked missile launcher. Let's say these star cannon. Oh no! Yeah, so that happens sometimes. Nothing a little super glue can't fix. Now I will say this. Um, I'm uh, not really good at cutting and drilling and stuff like that. Um, the better you are at making holes, you know, completely vertical or completely, you know, um, horizontal, uh, you know, basically level holes, the better looking your turret's going to be. Right now it's a little janky. Some of the weapons are a little crooked uh, because the, the holes aren't exactly, you know, 90 degrees or perpendicular to the axis of the weapon. Um, you know, if you have clamps, and if you have like drills that you can kind of press down exactly 90 degrees, um, this will look a lot better. Um, I don't have those tools, um, and uh, I don't have that kind of skill, so my magnetization efforts look well, they look like this. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to add some additional reinforcement, you could probably introduce a little bit of um, milliput or some green stuff to kind of further reinforce this joint because it's a little, it's a little, it's a, it could use more reinforcement. Um, but I don't really have those those skills, um, so I'm just showing you kind of the, the most basic way. I'm sure there's a, a, a much nicer way of doing it if you had additional skills and tools and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but if you just want something quick and dirty uh, that still looks decent, then this is going to be the way to go. Now, these are almost complete. But they're not 100% complete because we are missing the cowling how we're going to get this thing to go on here. Well, thankfully, we've got this magnet already mounted, and this piece already has uh, like a, an area where the magnet can go. So the trick is going to be just to shave off that part right there, attach a magnet to it, and we should be good to go. So I'll do that. So you clip off that uh, that tube that was there. Then you figure out your polarity for one of these. So it's going to stick here. There. So we want to put our magnet 
right here. Now I don't have I don't have to use anything quite this thick. This is a five millimeter by two millimeter. Um, I could do something thinner, like I say, a five millimeter by one millimeter. Right there. I've got the proper orientation. So now I add a little dab of glue and I slide the magnet onto the piece just like that and once it dries it should be able to go onto my weapon on a temporary basis but I won't attempt it just yet. In the meantime I'll do the same thing to the other side. Here are the cowlings or armor plates or whatever you want to call them. Come off like that. There's a magnet. Snap them in place. There's this guy. Same deal. And then if you swap, swap out the weapon, uh, for say something like, oh, that, there you have it. Now, you can't actually take the turret like this, at least in the current iteration of the game as I understand it, but wouldn't it be cool to have something like that? Yeah, I think it would. All right, that is the turret done. The next step we're going to take is relatively simple, but it, needs, but it needs to be done. We're talking about the flight stand. All right, so. So we know why we're doing this, um, and we're not going to be fancy about it. Uh, we, we have, this is the flight stand it, the model came with, it doesn't have one of those black ones, so we don't have to worry about decorating it, so there's that. This however is not the normal flight stand, this is a flight stand I got from um, the Magnet Baron. It comes in little bags like this, but this is not, this is a, a small posable magnetic flight stand. The one I have here is the medium, I believe. Maybe it's the large, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's the one that has the option. So sometimes you have an option for having a large, like a tall one, sometimes it's a, a medium one, and then you have the short one. Since this is a grab tank and not a flyer, I went with the short one. And the way this works is you'll notice it has this little divot in there, and it also has a steel ball bearing. The ball bearing goes on here, you glue it down like so, and you kind of have to be patient with it because the ball bearing doesn't really want to stick with, um, uh, with a super glue, but have some patience, it'll be fine. So that's that part of it. The second part of it is this guy right here. This is the ring magnet, but it is countersunk. It has a little divot right there in the center. That's where the ball bearing will go. So it has to go on the underside of the tank. Now, you could drill it in, but you don't really have to. It's not that big a deal. Uh, just have it sticking out. It's going to have a ball bearing in it anyway, so you don't have to worry about hiding it because there's no hiding it. It's going to be resting on this thing. So spend your creative uh, energies elsewhere. You'll notice it has two pegs. Um, one of them is further towards the front of the craft. One of them is towards the back of the craft. You want to align this magnet uh, as far to the front as you can on this part of the chassis uh, because the center of gravity is closer to the front than it is to the back. So if you put it in the back, you're going to want to it's going to want to tip forward um, and it's going to, you know, slide on this ball bearing. So the closer you get this pivot point uh, to the center of gravity, um, at least uh, horizontally, um, I think you'll be better off. So uh, the center of gravity for this craft is probably about right here. I just kind of sussed it out by trying to balance it on my finger. Uh, 
and actually the center of gravity is closer to this kind of in between these two pegs uh, if I could I would put the the um, the ring magnet kind of around there but there's this little lip there so I can't put it down so I have a choice of putting it here or here this I think is closer so I'm gonna lay down some of the glue Kind of right around that hole. I'm going to be generous because again I'm trying to glue metal to plastic and you want to make sure the countersunk side is um, well facing out away from the model. So it looks like that. It looks funny, it's fine, uh, but when it's done it's going to have uh, it's going to be a nice place for this model to sit. And it'll look a bit like that. It's not bad. This is kind of what it's supposed to look like. Uh, it's a little slippery, so you're gonna have to you're gonna want to be careful. Uh, I don't know that a larger magnet is gonna do the trick. Um, if you don't want it to kind of slip and slide, you could do a non-posable magnet. So it's, instead of the countersunk magnet and the ball, it's just a flat disc, and the flat disc will just sit kind of uh, on there. Um, I'm kind of considering that. I like the idea of the ball bearing, but it's a little slippery. I like being able to kind of like vroom, vroom, but it, do, it isn't very stable. So here's a little brief interruption from the future. Uh, I, I was a little unhappy with how jiggly my um, wave serpent was on top of this flight stand. Uh, so much so that I really considered um, replacing the ball bearing and the countersunk ring magnet uh, with just two flat ones. Just eliminate the, the, the ability for the tank to swivel on this uh, pivot point. But then I thought, Maybe there's a better solution. Maybe there's something else I can do. So, in the past, I have uh, used uh, stuff like uh, epoxy putty or uh, I don't know, the, the green stuff, the two-part epoxy uh, that you use for kind of like sculpting or reinforcing elements. Uh, and, it, and it hasn't worked. It didn't provide enough friction to keep, you know, the to add resistance to the pivot point. Uh, and sometimes it even reduced the attractive force. Um, so I know that wasn't a good solution because I've used it in the past and it hasn't worked. Um, but I thought, let me try one thing. And it worked. Here is the Wave Serpent now. It's, uh, I'm in the middle of painting it. It's not done, but it's getting kind of close. Um, and you'll notice that it is on its flight stand. Now it's not perfect, but it's a little less wiggly. Um, I can put it in a basically kind of a, a position and it'll stay there. Um, not all positions obviously, um, but some. How did I accomplish this? How did I introduce a little bit of friction without sacrificing you know, much of the uh, attractive force of the magnets? Well the answer is this stuff. This is Gorilla Glue Wood Glue. Now, I don't know that the brand matters. It just happens to be what I use. Uh, but a little bit of wood glue applied to this ball bearing, just kind of with your finger. Uh, you put it on there and you let it dry and it gives you just enough resistance that putting the Wave Serpent on the grav tank isn't and exercise in futility. I'm really glad I stumbled across this solution. It's going to save me lots and lots of headaches going forward. And I think I have a couple of models uh, that have been magnetized where I had this problem. And now I have a solution for it. And it's not as radical as going back and removing those magnets and replacing them with flat disks. This, if you're having trouble with um, loose uh, ball bearing uh, and ring, countersunk ring magnets, this might be the way to go.
And since you probably already have some wood glue in your collection because it's useful for basing, um, then um, you don't have to spend any extra money. You've got it already in your supply drawer. So these present an interesting problem because this is the weapon I want to swap. This is the part that it uh, connects it to the craft. So this part goes on to the uh, onto the vehicle, and it's and so this little disc thing is supposed to go um, inside here. And it kind of feels like it's a friction fit, so you're supposed to push this in there with enough force so that it slips in, and you don't have to glue it, so it'll go up and down. Um, but once you get this in there, it's not coming out, so you're not going to be able to swap it. Um, so it gives me a couple of challenges, and so any way I go, I'm going to have to widen this up. So I'm going to have to make room here in order to slip this piece in and out at will. So as I magnetize it, it'll go click without having to be pushed in because this is going to be glued to the, to the vehicle and it's going to snap off if I try to do that. So I have to widen this up by maybe a millimeter on each uh, kind of total. Um, that's going to be tricky. So I'll have to do it here and I'll have to do it here. In terms of magnets, uh, I have a couple of options, really just two. Given the size of this aperture here, I could use some disc magnets like this. These are three millimeter by one millimeter. They are, they are the widest magnet I can conceivably get in there. Um, but I can only get one in. If I drill into it, I can maybe get a stack too deep, and that might be the way to go, but it's a tight fit in there. Getting my drill bit into that area is going to be tough, and then sliding the magnets in there is also going to be tough. Um, I'll have to do the same thing on this side. So somehow I have to get disc magnets to stick on to here, so there's a couple ways I can go about it. I think the way I'm going to do is I'm going to file this down flat, uh, Put in some additional material there with some maybe some green stuff and mount the magnets there. However, I'm not going to go with a disc magnet because while it is the the, the biggest I can fit uh, in there, um, there's a lot of because it's round, it's a it's a circle. There's a lot of surface area that is not going to be magnetic. So while it is the biggest disc magnet I could potentially get in here, it is not the biggest magnet I can use. What will work. These are the biggest magnets I can fit in there. They're about the same size. These are three millimeters by three millimeters by one millimeters, but they're block magnets. They are, they are little squares. Once I widen this up by just a little bit, I should be able to get a single stack, well, a single layer of magnets, uh, kind of too deep. Uh, in that same little spot, well, I may be able to do one on top of the other, but if push comes to shove, uh, I'll just use a single one of these, and this has slightly more room, uh, slightly more magnetic force than the disc of equivalent size. Um, and then I'll do the same thing to this side. So uh, I've got some filing in my future. That should be fun. Ugh, that's too thick. Yep, I have this metal file. It's thinner than my nail my nail files that I usually use. Uh, this should do the trick eventually. So making this wide enough uh, was actually not as hard as I thought. That metal file did uh, some quick work, so now I can get it in and out, no problem. But I don't know if you can tell, right there, that far wall, that's where my magnets are going to go, and you can, there's a little thing there. Uh, it's a piece of plastic, um, and it's going to interfere with gluing the magnets. So you want to get rid of it, but it's a really, really small space. Uh, there's no way 
that this nail file, that this file is going to go in there. Actually, I think it is a nail file, but whatever. Um, luckily, I happen to have a variety of metal files. These um, I don't use very often because metal files are pretty rough on plastic, but in situations like this, I'm really glad I have them. And I don't know of any other tool that's going to be able to do the job. This is thin enough to fit right in there, and I'll get the this one is shaped as kind of a square. So the flat side is fairly small. I can get it right in there. And since it is on an inside surface that's going to get super glue, I don't care if it's rough. Um, in fact, rough is good because it means the super glue gets additional purchase. Once that's nice and flat, we introduce our super glue. Obviously, I'm not going to leave the entire stack in there, but uh, I'm going to wait until that super glue dries up. So there's the piece. It's nice and flat, um, and and it wasn't as much work as I feared. So now I have to figure out the orientation of the magnets. So here, is my magnetized weapon. Now, it's got an extra stack of magnets in there I need to get rid of. My hobby knife should do the trick. And so there we are. Um, now the, <laughs> the orientation of these magnets is a little tricky. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how these work. I think they have to, yeah. I think it's more about, so here, for example, they repel, but if I do that, they'll work. Uh, since I have a pair stacked on top of each other, I have to make sure that the orientation is right. In this case, I have to flip it around, and that makes contact right there. So I have to use the opposite side. So this side sticks. I have to use this side to, to make that work. And I have to make sure that the top and bottom are correct. That's the way these work. So I have an uneven stack of magnets. The longest side is the top. I'll have to remember that as I glue this down. And so I have the piece. And I'm pretty sure I have the orientation right, but I, like I said, I'm not 100%. So there might be some trial and error involved. Alright, I just glue the two together. When this dries, I can test it out to make sure that it worked the way I think it's going to work. And here is my wave serpent. Uh, it's fully magnetized, and in this case, it's fully painted. Um, I don't usually show you the painted model uh, on these video uh, in these videos, but I forgot to show you this last results uh, clip uh, before I started painting this thing. I got really excited about painting this thing, uh, and I forgot to film it. But you know what? That's cool. You can kind of see what it looks like after all the work you've done. Specifically, you'll see here's a turret, and here is the chin turret. Let me pull these out because while I was able to stabilize this platform a little bit, it's still not, you're still not able to remove the weapons and all that kind of stuff uh, while it's on there. It'll, it'll still kind of flop around. Um, so let's start with the chin turret. It, it does go up and down. It probably does side, yeah, it does do side to side, but probably just leave it in one position. It's fine. And you can pull it out like that. Replace it with these twin-linked shuriken catapults. Uh, but honestly, if you're following the rule of cool, and you should, the shuriken cannon looks a lot cooler on the front of this weapon. As for the turret, here we go. Uh, it's here, and you can remove the weapons and replace them with 
uh, other weapons. Uh, these star cannon, they're crooked uh, as as I'll get out. Uh, that is just my lack of skill and patience and what have you. Uh, with any luck, you can do better, but you get the idea, right? It's certainly doable with a, a reasonable amount of tools and a reasonable amount of skill, and uh, you can do better than this, and it'll be fine. Uh, what I will point out is that there's going to be some messiness and some sloppiness here uh, if you're not very careful. The good news is that you have these cowlings right here, and they cover up a lot of the sins you just committed, or at least maybe it's just me. And if you're careful and get the polarities uh, just right, then you can swap the callings out no matter what weapons you have in there. Uh, you can have the callings on there as well, and it'll cover up uh, the magnets, and it'll make it look a little cooler. Uh, so, yeah. Here's what I will say about this project. Um, you want to be careful because it's easy to make um, it's easy to make errors and kind of over drill. Uh, as a matter of fact, this shuriken cannon right here, it I over drilled to the point that I made this so weak that it snapped off as I tried to pull it off of the turret as I was testing it. So it broke. I had to go back and repair it with uh, some green stuff. And as you can see, it looks gross. My sculpting uh, abilities are really bad. <laughs> and so this is, this is what this looks like. Hopefully yours won't look like this. And in any case, it has a cowling. It'll cover it when it's on your model. It's going to be fine. I will also point out that at the end of your project, you're gonna have a ton of weapons to store. Uh, it is the bane of everyone who does any magnetization. Uh, it's the kind of exchange you make, right? Uh, if you want the tactical flexibility of having the different weapons options on your model, then you're gonna have to keep them somewhere and keep them somewhere where they don't get damaged. Uh, if you don't want your paint job to suffer, it, I highly recommend a, a light to medium coat of uh, matte varnish. It'll keep your, your, your plastic, it'll keep your paints uh, a little more secure uh, so they'll survive the rough handling that they're bound to get. So, if you were curious about how to go about magnetizing your uh, wave serpent, I've shown you some pretty decent, um, a pretty decent approach uh, on how to accomplish that. Uh, obviously, you don't have to do all the weapons. Maybe you'll never use a shuriken uh, cannons, so don't include them uh, in your magnetization magnetization efforts. Just toss them and magnetize those options that you think you're going to use. At any rate, thank you very much for watching this episode. Um, I hope you uh, you picked up a couple of hints, uh, a couple of tips on how to magnetize uh, your wave serpent. Uh, if you enjoyed any part of this and would like for other people to see this video in case they have a wave serpent that they want to magnetize, go ahead and give me a like or a subscribe. That'll help the uh, video reach more people who might be interested in doing the same. Either way, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace.